Hey ladies, you told me you were ready to get motivated. So are you ready for a good kick in the pants? Are you ready to spend the rest of your life in the best way you can? Happy, aging, but loving it? Well, hang in there. You got some tough love coming from your nanny. So what we're gonna do first is we're going to talk about things that you have to stop doing. Stop, do, before we can get our minds ready. And then there are the external things like the health and the diet and the money and, and all the things you think you might like to do. So let's get started. Okay, here are the things that we're gonna stop. You have to learn to be in control of your own life. Now that sounds easy, but is it? That's number one. You have to eliminate obstacles. You can write all this down on paper and probably they say that's the best way to do it. Write down what you think the obstacles are for you to be able to live your best life in the future, however long it might be. Three, stop comparing yourself to others. You are you, and you have to learn to love you. You are unique, and some people have to learn that. Sooner or later, you will figure it out. But learn to be you, and stop comparing. Okay, here's a biggie. Stop making excuses. You can say, oh, I'm too tired today, or it's raining today. I can't get up and do what I want to do, or um, oh, I'll, I'll call my, my son, my daughter, my granddaughter, my friend tomorrow. You got to stop procrastinating and stop making excuses. And that's maybe four and five right there. You know, a lot of us feel Maybe you don't feel this way anymore, but you did. And I know I did way back in when I was a, a grade school girl, maybe a little bit in college, but I wanted everyone to like me. And I think you all feel that way. And after a while, you realize that there are going to be some things that just you tick them off just by being you. And you have to accept that, that um, like anything else, Everyone is not gonna love you and that doesn't matter. You only need the people that are in your life to love you. Obviously, if, if you're smiling a lot and you have a good positive attitude, people are gonna love you anyway. Now there are two more things that you must stop now. You must stop thinking that you are going to fail or make a mistake when you're out there. Now, whether that's in meeting people, meeting new people, or saying the wrong thing, or anything to do with failure. So you learn through failure and mistakes. So many things that I've learned in my life have been in the areas where I first made a couple of mistakes and then, then learned how to get it right. Not only in physical things, but mental things as well. For instance, I've learned, and this is important, so listen to this one, because this can impede you in many, many ways. I have learned to let go a lot of things that years and years ago, and this is probably more internal, bothered me. You know, arguments with Moosey, and then, of course, everybody has arguments with a spouse, especially if you've lived with somebody for 62 years, or disappointments with the kids or somebody in the family. I would cry and carry on, very emotional, and, and, and then realize that that's crazy. Now, maybe I will have what I call an EO, an emotional outburst, but I won't do it in front of anybody. I'll go in the shed and have that come back and say, okay, I'm fine. I have learned that if I internalize these little things and in the, uh, when you're talking about the whole picture, 
of years and years and years of togetherness and family and how uh, internalizing things too much can wreck your life, can wreck a marriage, can ruin your children's lives. You can't do that. You've got to let it go. Maybe you'll never forget it or whatever, but you can't let it ruin your life or others' lives because there's so much more out there. Many times those things are over little things. Isn't it true? Little things, you can have an argument or cry over something very tiny, then you get over it. So don't dwell on it. Let let those things go. That's That's what I've learned to do. And I think I have told some rabbit stories on things in my life way back when that I thought were the end and I'd never recover from them. And I did, obviously. There's another one that we all do. We overthink things. We think, you know what? My hip might be acting up tomorrow, so I don't think I can go out and meet Sally. I better call her and, and say, we'll make that lunch and date for some other time. You know, we have been in a two to three year, as Patricia calls it, a COVID cocoon. And we have made all sorts of new habits that we never had before. We never had these fears. We have to overcome our fears of what we have built into our life. And it really affects your future. I'm a, a present worrier. I worry about things as they come up. Yes, I do worry. I worry about the kids, the grandkids. I worry about a lot of things. But you know what? I do not let those worries consume me. I don't let the problems of present problems with family or Moosey consume me because I know, oh, what am I trying to say here? I, I'm chirpy as some of you call me. I am a real positive thinking person. And, and I go back to something that my mother told me when I was little and told me many times throughout my life with her when she was alive. She always used to say that you only have one life. God has given you one precious life to live and you better get it right because you don't get another chance. Each day that goes, you are wasting to fulfill your life, to live your best life. And from the time I was little, I always had something to look forward to. Give yourself things to look forward to. Little things. Moosey and I look forward to going out for yogurt. We look forward to having a drive through lunch. We look forward to sitting outside. We look forward to Netflix. Silly little things. And then we look forward to seeing family. You know, um, Steve Jobs, I think that's how you pronounce his name, was 56 years old when he was dying of, um, I think, pancreatic, pancreatic cancer. And he was probably one of the wealthiest men in the world. And as he, he left a, a, some of his last words, and I did write them all down, but the, the gist of it, let me just tell you, that he realized that what mattered in life were values, not things. He said, a Rolex, $3,000 Rolex or 30,000 Rolex will still keep the same time as a $20 Timex watch. That a Ferrari will still get you where do you want to go the same as a Ford car or a Toyota would. And he went on and on making comparisons of things in life that really don't matter in the long run at all. And you know what he said it was? It's the people in your lives that love you and care about you. Whether it's friends, whether it's only one friend or a whole big family of friends. That's what matters. You must have connections with family or friends or just someone, whether that is in person, whether that's by Zoom or telephone or 
or letters or computer, you must have connections. That future out there is so bright and it doesn't matter whether you want to travel the world or whether you want to go out to dinner every night and go to movies and meet your friends for lunch every day or whether you just want to sit in your garden and putter around, watch the birds. Maybe you love reading and you just want to cozy down by a fireplace and read. Everybody's future dreams are different. And especially as we're older, we learn to adjust our future dreams. But in order to live that best life, those obstacles, all those things have to be removed first getting some joy out of something. I, I could tell you little rabbit holes. Everything that I say, I think of something that gives me joy. Just today, Moosey and I were down in Newport getting his hearing aids fixed. And on the way home, when we pulled into Carl's Jr. for a car lunch, straight ahead of us, sticking out in the middle of a parking lot, not a pretty area, was this magnificent tree a huge giant tree with pink blossoms all over the place. I looked at that straight ahead of me and that gave me joy. Now that must might sound silly, but little things like that can give us joy. You have to teach yourself to appreciate little things like that. Here's some more things that we can do and put into that what we must do column. We must learn to accept the changes in our body. Yes, things go downhill as we get older, but you can maintain. But what has happened all those things like with me, the, the smashed up knees and the hip aches, I am blessed and I am grateful that I'm not in great pain but let's try and learn to accept the changes in our body, the wrinkles everywhere, the saggy skin and everything. Just accept it, let it go, and love yourself for just everything that you are. Now, I think we've gotten through all the stops. So now where are we? We've gotten rid of the obstacles. And by the way, those of you who are like me, who have learned that that life is so precious and i've learned that through through so many things that have happened in our lives that there there is nothing as important as your life and the lives of of all your friends your family around you and that you must live your life to the best way you can because you have a future out there and why spend the rest of that life wallowing around, feeling sorry for yourself, feeling that everybody else is having fun and you're not. You cannot do that. You must motivate yourself. And you know what? I can help to motivate you, but you are the ones that are gonna motivate yourself. So think of the future. COVID is lightening up. I think I've said that before, but I think it might truly be. And even if it isn't, it's got to end. You have to start thinking about your goals in life. Most of you have beautiful long lives to live. I, I'm thinking beautifully too. Who knows? But I'm looking forward to my future, to Moosey's future, to the future of all our kids. And I want it to be great. Now, we won't be doing a lot of traveling anymore. We won't be, be out gallivanting and dancing anymore. A lot of the things that we loved, but that's okay because as you age, you replace a lot of that with things that, that, that bring you joy at the moment, right now in your present life. So think about some of those things. And you know, it's good to write things down. I do a lot of that. Sometimes I lose the pages that I'm writing on, but I think that helps you to internalize the way you want to live and the way you're able to live. Now, I'm assuming that most of us are in our 
60s, 70s, and even 80s like me. And I'm sure maybe there's some a little bit younger and you're trying to think about the future and what you want to do. You maybe have just retired, the kids have all left, they're on their own. What are we going to do now? Well, we all have different ideas in our mind about what our futures are going to be like. And that's what you have to think about. How do you want to spend your future? You know, those of us in our 80s, our future is narrowing. Some of you may be in your 70s. And there's all sorts of other things to consider. Number one, it's health. Determine your health disabilities if you have them. How serious is your health? What are the obstacles that might interfere with attaining some of your future goals? And then there's another one, and that's money. Determine what you thought you might like to do or what you're able to do. And you know, one of my ladies did mention that word able, and she said most of it is on wishing and praying that she will be able to do what she wants to do. And those of you in your living situations, are you living alone? and you're, you're lonely, you're sad? Do you have a partner, a longtime husband, maybe a new partner? Figure all of these into the big picture of your future. Now, I, I want to mention that I know many of you are very happy. You have learned how to enjoy your retirement you have all kinds of goals and plans, and I think that's wonderful. So maybe you don't need this little pep talk from me. So if you, if you don't mind, you just go on to the end where I have a little garden thingy to lighten things up. And also, I am going to maybe somewhere get that spice chai latte in that we can both sit and kind of lighten things up too with our chai latte. I promised you that. So... For those of you who have, who are suffering some real disabilities in the way of pain, in the way of a disease, or some, some PTSD, you know, I came across a channel and it's called My Crappy Childhood Fairy. And I laughed when I saw that and I thought, whoever this is that has this channel must have some pretty good things for people who have have very bad memories of their childhood and have brought these forward and are still suffering from abuse, neglect, whatever. And, you know, look her YouTube channel up. She might be able to help you. My crappy childhood fairy, and her name is Anna. And I listened to a, a couple of her YouTubes and I think she might be able to help you. So look her up. I, th I thought that was cute. You know, we've talked about all the internalizing of this, um, motivating ourselves to be able to live our best life and have a great future. And um, we, we should talk a little bit about uh, some external things. For instance, the way we dress. Now there's so many rules. Um, clothing that you shouldn't wear, stop doing this type of clothing or these types of shoes and things when you are aging or mature. You know what? Forget that. There's lots of things that I still do at 85 that I suppose I shouldn't be doing. I love my big fancy jewelry. I love any kind of clothing that number one, I can walk in. Now I can't walk in the old high heels anymore, but I sure can wear some cowboy boots or other things that maybe people might think are for the younger generation. I still love sweater sets, my old fashioned sweater sets. And by the way, I have a cardigan that goes with this outfit. And people say, oh, cardigans are out. Baloney, you know what? You wear what you like. And I like everything. I like everything from head wraps to bohos to classic preppy clothing. Wear what you love and what you think you like. Experiment. Try new things. That will perk you up 
And when you get out there, I bet you'll get a compliment too. And now for those of you who are having more serious troubles, trying to be happy because of perhaps being isolated in your home or being someone who lives alone and needs some assistance to get out. You know, there are services. I think you, you just have to go for it. Get a friend or a neighbor or someone to suggest. Maybe it would be, um, I don't know whether men are better than women and things like this, but maybe you could find organizations that can help you get out. If you're in a wheelchair, you know, many people get out and about with their wheelchairs uh, if, if they're disabled like that. If they have a friend to take them out, go to lunch. You can, you can go anywhere in a wheelchair. Um, don't, don't let things like that stop you. I know you might say, oh, that's easy for you to say, Manny, but you know, give it a try. Just, just do it. Find somebody to help you. And, and there might be certain organizations and services. I always say church, there's always someone at church who wants to help someone else. And that just brought something to my mind. One of my lovely uh, viewers, a woman by the name of Ima, she has said many times, and she's been watching for a long time, that she has made up her mind that every day she is going to get up and put her makeup on and put her best outfit on and go out and make other people happy. Ah, I just think that's wonderful. And Ima, you go, girl, because I... I think more people should do that. And by the way, if you are a person who doesn't have a lot of friends or family, go out, go to Costco, sit down and have lunch and and you, you can strike up a conversation with other people. All you have to do many times, and I, I have noticed this when I have done this, not only on my own, but with my little grandchildren, all you need to say is something nice to a stranger, somebody who has opened a door for you or something who, someone who smiles at you, would just say, thank you, you have made me so happy. And you know what? You will remember that person and that person will remember what you said to them and they'll never forget that. Those are little things, but boy, do they matter. So, so there's a big circle of you out there with all different kinds of either obstacles or, or great motivation. And some of you I can maybe help and some of you I'm just trotting right along with you. When it gets to our physical self, no matter what you look like, no matter whether your hair is gray or red or dark, no matter whether you have put on weight or you're thin or whatever, Learn to love makeup. I have to tell you, I didn't wear makeup most of my life. Yes, I did my eyes and I wore lipstick, but I didn't do all the, the camouflaging and everything. I didn't have to until a couple of years ago. And I, if you have seen me without makeup, and I think that the makeup makes you feel better because it makes you look better. There's wonderful things and you don't have to spend a lot of money on it either. Get yourself a haircut. I just cut my hair myself recently and it's my winter hairdo and I, and I like it. I also liked it all summer when I can put it up on top of my head and do all sorts of fun things. Do what makes you happy. It doesn't matter how many wrinkles you have, how hooded your eyes are, my eyes are hooded. What's happening? Experiment with clothes. Go out to the thrift shop, buy some bags or shoes or a couple of cute sweaters or outfits for fall. You don't have to spend a lot of money to look like a million bucks. And then get out there and have some fun. I think you're all getting it by now. Um, it all boils down to, I don't want to make this too long. I always say that. Then I go on and on. But uh, it all boils down to a few things. Figure out what your obstacles are to being able to live that life. Overcome all those obstacles and fears. Don't let them be fears anymore. Learn to love yourself, take control of your life, and take chances. You know, we all have choices in this world, 
and we can choose one way or the other. Make some good choices and get out of this COVID co cocoon, as Patricia calls it, and um, start living the life that you always thought you wanted to live. And those of you that are younger, have fun if you can travel, um, spend tons of time with your friends, your families, get out once in a while. You all know what you can do. If you are older in your 80s, if you're still able to do that, good on you. And if you're just like other people, enjoy the simple things of life because you can get a lot of joys out of that. And all those hobbies that all your life you said you were going to do, do them. Paint, knit, sew, learn to play the piano. So many wonderful things. So I think that might be it. Now, this is the time when I can either get my spice latte out and toast you all. And I want to hear back from all of you who might have possibly changed your mind. Please comment. I, I hope I helped you. I didn't talk about all those things about diet and exercise and movement and smiling and all those wonderful things you should be doing anyway, no matter what. Um, you have to know that those people who are positive thinking people that have positive thoughts, that think that the glass is half full, believe it or not, are aging better than the others, than the opposite, and possibly live longer. So, thank you for loving us. Thank you for watching. We'll see you real soon. Don't forget to comment. Bye for now, everybody, and God bless us all.